Today we're breaking down Nemo's coat. <laughs> this video is gonna be helpful for those of you who are learning to write song lyrics or who wanna improve their song lyrics writing skills. We'll analyze the lyrics, see the details, and pinpoint three things you can learn from there and three things that could be improved in those lyrics. <laughs> By the way, I'm Vadusha and I'm the greatest expert in song lyrics in the entire world, and maybe... ...even on YouTube. <laughs> Let's start very superficial, the level of rhymes. Show, no. Game, chains. Well, these are okay rhymes, nothing fancy there so far. Buckle up, another cup. A bit more syllables rhyming there, more than one. Boem, my friend. This is a near rhyme, I'd say. And this is a fancy word. This, I guess, here is to catch us off guard, because I don't really know what a boem really is. If I get it right, it's the French word for bohemia. But the problem is that boem is either an adjective, like something bohemic or a place i don't think this is used correctly here anyway if it's there to break the expectation to get some air candy in there probably this is the best place to do it right before the very last line of the verse the story is my truth this is a pre-chorus kind of tag that accompanies both of the two choruses and the chorus back track code oh, oh ammonites sometime Paradise. This is very nice. Ammonites and Paradise. This is a very clever rhyme. Ammonites. Three syllables are rhyming there. The complexity of the rhyme grows with the song. Just one syllable, then two syllables, and then three syllables right there. So it does look like Nemo knows what they're doing. About life, tight, strong what's right, everything's light. Okay, this is some lazy rhyming. Rhyming tight, right, and light. It's sort of very beginner, very amateur-ish. And then mind, night, sight, height. All right, it gets more complicated, so it starts really, really amateur-ish. And then it gets more complicated, but still using the same pattern. You could jam those in like one line, not stretch those easy rhymes in separate lines. There's an inversion of the highs and lows. Nemo takes the idiom and inverts it to fit the rhyme, and that shows Nemo again knows what they're doing. It's like someone took the rhyming dictionary and took the most common place where it's to rhyme and these are like high right light mm, not so good could be more inventive and given there's this ammonites paradise sometime this could be a different rhyme to differentiate it from the chorus completely then goes the chorus again and there's a bridge or whatever somewhere between the o's and ones it's where i found my kingdom come my heart beats like a drum and there's a defied expectation there they cut the word here and we reconstruct it in our head which is always a nice tool to use and then they sing it out loud and we know we're right and this releases our happiness hormones thus making the listener more engaged and happier overall listening to this and then the chorus again nothing fancy these are end rhymes let's see if there's some internal rhyming or some other phonetic stuff going on inside those lines welcome everybody i'm done a break not so much better buckle up this is a slight trace of alliteration not sure if this is deliberate there better buckle up Pour another cup. Boem, drink it up, my friend. Not much else going on. Hail and back. Self and track. Kind of rhyming. Broke the code. What? Uh oh. This full line rhymes with this full line, which is always a nice thing to have. They could say, I died to hail and back, or whatever, dived something to rhyme these two. This could be stronger in terms of rhyming, because this is the chorus where the listener's attention is the maximum. You can't pay more attention than you do in the chorus, except probably right there, right before the chorus, where the strongest line is. So this could be improved for sure. The good thing is there's a pattern, there's the tagline at the end of every piece of the chorus but rhyme wise this could be a bit stronger let me tell you a tale this is some alliteration again not sure if this is deliberate if they were deliberate about it there would be way more of these about the good and the bad better hold on tight maybe some alliteration there much mind pump side no 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 uh, maybe this
this one. Somewhere between the L's and ones. That's where I found my kingdom come. Well, these could rhyme too. Somewhere around the L's and ones, maybe. That's where I found my kingdom come. Whatever. These could rhyme better. And then the chorus again. Phonetically, very well built. Everything works as intended. There's a lot of metaphors and the whole thing is very full of imagery. I'm done playing the game, which is a metaphor or maybe a paraphrase for something. Breaking out of the chains, which is probably another way to say come out of the closet. Buckle up and these kind of things are not very expressive in terms of its metaphorical context. Went to hell and back is a metaphor. Find myself on track is a metaphor. Breaking the code is the best metaphor of this entire piece and that's what this whole song builds around. Breaking the code refers to these O's and ones, so zeros and ones, which is a binary code which Nemo broke. And that's the metaphor that extends through the song. Probably it could use a little bit more references to the metaphor in the lyrics and we'll get to that a little bit later on. Found paradise is a metaphor like ammonites is a nice punchline. Ammonites are very ancient creatures locked in stone, probably they are fossil and ammonites gave it some time for sure because they're like old. Probably, except for this Ammonite's punchline and this binary code and breaking the code thing is probably the only worthwhile metaphors there. Let's take a look at the storytelling part of it. The song opens with them welcoming us, so addressing the listener. That's prepping us for what's coming. This welcomes us, warns us, and then intensifies the warning. So far so good. The story is my truth, telling us that the story relates to the character or to Nemo himself. In the course we understand that something happened. The character went to hell and back to rethink their life and find paradise. Breaking some code. And we don't understand what the code is yet. We see what we see, we are asked to prepare for that and we're told that Nemo or whatever the character is, they broke the code. Not quite sure what the code is yet. Then, tale about life and we already know that this is a tale about life. About the good and bad, better hold on tight. Again, telling us to do the very same thing we did there buckling up. Besides what's wrong, what's right, everything in balance, everything like. This is kind of starting to poke in the right direction. I would absolutely get rid of that. That is absolutely redundant. We already know that. We've already been told that. This is asking the right questions in the right direction. Got so much on my mind. Who cares about that? That's not bringing any new information. Being awake all night. Again, no new information. So basically, I would get rid of the entire second verse. But for these couple of lines, because that's establishing who gets to decide what the code needs to be. Very good. Probably this one's not all that good. I would put that at the end of this and then rethink these two and these six, for sure. Don't need those. They're not bringing any new information. You kind of get bored listening to that. The song compensates for that because they start rapping here. The tempo of speech increases there, but it has to compensate for lack of storytelling. So this could be something different. Either telling how bad it was back then or actually telling us what happened. Because that's just going round and round, not being specific, just something bad is happening. Not sure what. Again, the second chorus, not sure what the code is still. That's where we get the idea. We understand that the code is the L's and ones, the binary code, and the puzzle gets pieced together. This whole non-binary idea is brilliantly expressed with this bridge. Probably I would swap these around. I swear I found my kingdom come somewhere between the O's and ones. Cause the O's and ones are the strongest idea here. That's the punchline of the whole thing. So I'd move that closer to the end. Cause that's the place where the concentration of attention of the listener is at the top. And that we need to hear the chorus one more time. Cause we understand what the code was and what it has been all that time. All right, let's sum it up. The three things I would improve in Nemo's code. First of all, 
I will get rid of this. This is not something that's adding value. That's just watering the thing, adding some meaningless text to it. Second, I would probably improve the rhyming in the choruses, because this could rhyme a little bit better somewhere here to make it like a panto rhyme, when every syllable of every line rhymes with every other syllable of every other line. And do the same in the bridge. And the third thing, I'd take the metaphor of the binary code and I'd expand on it. I'd really think of what goes in there. I would build an association map, like a mind map, and think binary code, zeros and ones. So being a zero, a complete zero, is one thing. Being one with yourself, or being one with somebody else, or with nature, or with the world. These are very superficial, but I'd dig deeper in those. Now expand on that, find a couple of more punchlines or clever ideas and put them right there where we deleted all of that. Other than that, the song is built very well and works extremely well and Nemo's winning Eurovision is just a proof of that. And the things that make it so brilliant are the things we can learn. First of all, it's the chorus. It opens up, it tells a story each time it runs. First time we don't understand what the code is, the second time we don't understand what the code is either. But the third run explains the whole thing to us and it opens up and you can re-listen to the song and you can listen to the song from the very beginning with a very different thought in mind. Now you hear it differently, now you understand it differently, so it plays differently the second time round. And that's not always easy to achieve and it takes quite some professionalism to do that. The second thing is this extended metaphor of the binary thing. These O's and ones there, the code mentioned there, playing the game, also somewhat connected to coding. So this extended metaphor that runs through the song is a thing I totally recommend you replicating in your own lyrics. It's gonna add cohesion, it's gonna add proficiency to what you do. Your lyrics are gonna be overall more expensive sounding. And the third thing we can learn is using those interjections or whatever ad-libs or wo's and choruses. It works every single time. Remember how many good songs you know that use these o's and woes and ahs and yes. So that's something absolutely to take away from Nemo and use in your own artistic endeavors. So that's Nemo, the winner of Eurovision 2020. Thank you for watching the video till the very end and not skipping any bit of it. It lets YouTube know the video is interesting and YouTube starts promoting the video, especially if you subscribe to the channel while watching it. And please, please like the video if you have a heart. I hope you managed to learn something new from there and take something away to use in your own songs, because you're awesome. Yes, you are.